On a stormy autumn night, a baby bird egg going on hatchling gets separated from her nest. Quirks of fate deliver her to the doorstep of a family of mice, who take her in as one of their own. Season turns to winter, and the nest of mice plus one blessed little robin lead a cheerful life. The only source of unease is where to score the next meal. Luckily, it's the holiday season, the time of lavish parties and ostentatious banquets, so there's plenty of treats to go around. The humans aren't going to miss a few measly crumbs. Robin Robin is a delightful modern Christmas fable. It is tightly written, solid half an hour of earnest joy and whimsy and wintry wonder, and just the perfect thing to get into the spirit of the season. The stop-motion work of Artman is astonishingly beautiful. The fact that most everything you see on screen actually exists in the form of puppets, miniatures, and physical sets carries a unique sense of immersion. The world feels tangible and alive. The sheer amount of effort and passion and love for the medium is on show in every frame. Also notable, this is the first production the studio has ever done with felting as the primary technique and style for their puppets, instead of their trademark clay animation, and the result is remarkable. The protagonist Robin herself is so perfectly realized, fluffy and round and utterly adorable, simply begging to be petted. Taken as a showcase of technical craftsmanship, the film is already impressive, coupled with a wonderful soundtrack, both blistery and warm, silly and triumphant, it's a treat to the senses, and at the center beats a wholesome heart, a timeless story of self-discovery. If this ain't the best Christmas-themed stop-motion film to ever exist, then at least it offers some serious competition. And right here, I'm telling you to stop the video and go watch it for yourself. In case you want to go in relatively spoiler-free, I fully recommend it, whether you check it out on your own or show it to the kiddiewinks in your close circle, there is something for everyone to enjoy. It's cute and funny, in a sincere way, there's no sign of current day pop culture cynicism, there's a bit of slapstick, character-based banter, and a dash of dry snark. It's perfect for kids and adults alike. The half an hour just whizzes by, the story flows from one beat to the next, and it's just a fun watch all around. It's hosted on Netflix, or you can check the high seas. Last chance, because I'm going to keep talking about the story now. Right now, the next sentence. Here goes. What I really appreciate about the film, beyond the artistry, beyond the engaging moment-to-moment -moment script, is the excellent thematic throughline. Despite being a Christmas story, the point of the tale has nothing to do with the true meaning of the holiday or anything of the sort. The story just happens to take place around Christmas time. In actuality, the core of the narrative is centered around the mental state of the protagonist. Robin is a Robin. Not exactly a revelation. Yet, because she has lived her entire young life amidst mice, she too wishes to be one, or rather, she thinks that a mouse is what she ought to be. That's the only example she has seen. That is the only life she has ever known. She has never even learned to fly, because mice don't fly. To her, there is nothing else. She is part of the mouse family, and thus she has to emulate them, to the point of styling her feathers into little four ear lobes. In the film, the essence of being a mouse is represented as the talent for sneaking. Robin's father, her brothers and sisters, are all gifted at the simple task of staying out of sight. That's the aptitude they have been born with, by the virtue of being mice. Conversely, Robin is clumsy and chirps too loud, and seems to just innately draw attention to herself. And thus we have conflict, Robin feels lesser, she is a failure as a mouse, and by extension, she fears that she is a failure as part of the family. And the drive to prove that she can do better, both to herself and her family, sets her on a series of misadventures. At the climax of the film, Robin ends up saving her family from the claws of a monstrous cat, by taking the role of the most unsneaky obvious target, and eventually bumbling her way into victory, 
Finally learning to fly in the process, Robin saves the day not by being a mouse, but what she was born to be, a bird, and everything that comes with it. In the end, she realizes that she does not have to force herself to be something she is not. She will never be a mouse, and that's okay. Her family loves her for her, as the blessing that arrived to them that fateful stormy night. Not because she is exactly like them, but because she is part of their family. Robin is Robin. They love her for being Robin. A healthy moral to offer, double so for kids. And despite being a silly animal fable, the underlying values of the film are unusually down to earth. Something I personally find appealing. Too often, especially nowadays, stories try to sell the philosophy of you can achieve anything and become anything by simply deciding so, which is an outright lie. There are countless factors, society and genetics to name a few, that directly prove this message false. Everyone is born with a different lot in life, that's just reality of existence. Overly idealistic nonsense only sets up people to fail. It is okay to dream, but the thing you want might be unachievable for no fault of your own. Pining for the impossible will leave you miserable. To live a fulfilling life, people should try to identify the gifts and aptitude and opportunities they do have and realize that unique potential to the fullest. Like at the very end of the film, where Robin embraces her true self as the captivating bird that she is. She uses her talents to act as a decoy, while the rest snatch up a hearty Christmas meal for all. Complementing talents and precious moments made possible by unified efforts. Thanks for watching and happy holidays one and all. Special thanks to everyone on Patreon and extra special thanks to 10 euro supporters Wyland, Six Stars, Jesaja Vanderwatt, Danny Kicks and Adona Daniel. Take care everyone and I'll see you all in the next one.